What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I should say this morning's video because it's almost one o'clock in the morning. What the heck is going on, Lions? All right, you're trying to break the record. When we sign Nick Williams around two in the morning, it's one in the morning. We're close. I, hey, this is close. But hey, I guess this is just how free agency goes. But I don't care. It's fun. I'm wide awake. We got some Detroit Lions news. The Lions are finalizing a deal to trade for veteran defensive tackle Michael Brockers from the LA Rams. All right. Now, I don't know the trade details right now. You'll probably know them by the time this video goes up. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know what the Rams are necessarily getting in return here. So we're kind of waiting on that. Once I get it, I'll put in a comment section but as of now i don't have i'm actually waiting right here to see if it updates while i'm talking but unfortunately it has not yet but i can't tell you the contract details so what i've read is that the lions will take on an 8.5 million dollar cap hit for 2021 which is a little bit less than his base salary so he's going to take on they're going to take on 8.5 million dollar cap hit which is it's kind of pricey there's no denying it's kind of pricey for the lions and the rams will be freeing about just over six million dollars in cap space while also potentially getting something in return now i'm projecting this is going to be a draft pick i'm thinking 2022 probably not a first round pick size something later maybe like a fourth round you know maybe 2022 fourth round something like that that's kind of what i'm thinking but we'll see it could be a player i don't know maybe the lions throw a player in there but i think the rams are trying to save cap with this move that's what a lot of people are assuming so it's probably not gonna be a player it's probably one of those situations where the rams are saving money and uh you know lions probably didn't have to give up a lot to get in return other than taking on the cap space and why i say this is because michael brockers actually was asked to do a restructure and they never could come to a deal so because they couldn't restructure his contract was would have been just to simply save the money this season they decided to trade him away to save that money instead so i'm assuming they're not getting a lot of return hopefully they're not if they're not it means the Lions are basically picking someone up, not giving a lot of return just because the team is trying to give them off just to save some money. So it's great to have money. It really is. Money talks, man. Mike Denzler doing his thing, being prepared for opportunities that had his way. But that's why you work your cap space magic. I see you, Mike Denzler. So let's talk about Michael Brockers a little bit in this video. Michael Brockers was drafted back in 2012, which I believe was actually the first year of the director of college scouting for Brad Holmes with the Rams. But I know he was the director of college scouting. So, of course, scouting him coming out of the draft. Now, he was the 14th overall pick back in 2012. So clearly he was a pretty high pick. So this is someone that they definitely knew a lot about. And Brad Holmes knew a lot about. Now, he's 30 years old. But what's interesting about this is that after the 2019 season, heading into 2020, he was going to be a free agent. He decided to give this guy a contract extension. They signed him to a three-year, $24 million deal, which is kind of expensive. But they locked him up. So because the Lions are making this trade, it will mean that he has two years left on his deal. And what do the Lions tell us? Where are we two years from now? Well, he's going to be here for the next two seasons. So hopefully, if the Lions can get this thing rolling, which you want them to be competitive, right? We, we all want them to be competitive. They should strive to be competitive then this hopefully is a part of that for the Detroit Lions. He's six foot five, 305 pounds at 30 years old. Michael Brockers is an interesting signing because when I look at defensive line signings, I think to myself, okay, is this a giveaway of what the Lions could be doing next season for the defensive scheme? And unfortunately, I don't think it is. It could be, but I don't know if it is. And the reason I say that is because it's very hard to gauge with Michael Brockers. He spent all this time with the LA Rams and they've been through some scheme changes with the LA Rams. But most recently, he's been in a similar defense to what the Lions ran last season and also to what, the background is of Aaron Glenn. So we're going to touch on that. So he actually started as a defensive tackle for the LA Rams when he came in. He was drafted as a 4-3 defensive tackle. And, you know, obviously he's played with Aaron Donald, so that's been very helpful. Some people say that, you know, he's played off Aaron Donald. Some people say that he's been kind of like the guy that's doing a lot of work, but he's not getting a lot of recognition. I think it's a little bit, honestly, the second one. The reason I say that is because the position that Aaron Donald plays allows him to get pressure. Now he's going to get double teams, but I'm just saying Michael Brockers does do some of that dirty work and he's most known to be a run stopping defensive lineman, but he can get through the quarterback and we'll dump, dump in the stats. But like I said, he started as a 4-3 defensive tackle and in 2000, I believe it was 2017, they had Wade Phillips come in as their defensive coordinator. Now, if you know Wade Phillips, he runs a 3-4 one gap defense. And we were talking about this. Could the Lions go to one gap next season and change it up? Maybe run some 3-4 one gap. It's not seen a ton, but the Lions have guys that have done some of that in the past and Aaron Glenn has ties working with guys that have done that including Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio and Wade Phillips have both worked together where Fangio was the head coach and Wade Phillips was the defensive coordinator and Vic Fangio is someone that Aaron Glenn learned from. He also played for Vic Fangio. So it's very interesting the ties here. So Lions could be looking at a 3-4-1 gap or they could be using him as a 4-3 defensive lineman. Either way, the good thing is, is he is scheme versatile for the Detroit Lions. Brandon Staley last season before he left, obviously to take a head coaching job, he ran a 3-4 defense, which used some two gap, one gap. I mean, he was very multiple defensively as a defensive coordinator, but they really rely on their defensive lineman to open up their linebackers, which is 
what he's able to do, which is great for us. As much as he's known for a good run defender, because he is, because you play him in a 3-4 scheme, you're going to get a lot of double teams. Now, in a one gap, a little bit less, right? You're kind of crashing. You have one gap responsibility. Uh, but last season, he had over 50 tackles and didn't have a single missed tackle. That's kind of insane. I mean, now we did get that tweet that Nick Williams put out there that made it sound like he was going to come back. So this was an interesting trade to me. Is something going to be here? Because the Lions would have Nick Williams, if they keep him around, assuming they do, Deshaun Hand, and Michael Brockers. It's interesting because now they did cut Danny Shelton, but then you have John Pennacini. It sounds like they could be moving to 4-3 because of the size, but it really sounds like a one-gap scheme could be in play here. I could absolutely see it be one gap. But again, when he was drafted, it was 4-4-3 defensive tackle. So we don't really know, but I could see it be one gap, which would make me very excited because his defensive line will be able to get after it. But if you look at his stats, last season he had five sacks. You look at his numbers through 2017 to 2019, and in 2019 he had nine quarterback hits. Okay, the guy can get after the quarterback. That's the thing. It's he, he's got he can get after the quarterback he's got good size you know he can fill the lanes because he's had to do that. he's a really good run defender but he's also shown flashes of being able to get after the quarterback at a pretty consistent level year in and year out he's usually getting after the quarterback and those numbers i just said you know they speak for themselves and obviously we'll have to watch some film on him but it's an interesting trade because the lions do have nick williams and they do have hand who kind of played that role for the 3-4 defense, but they played two-gap last season. Either way, it's depth, and it's a guy that can pass rush and stop the run. No disrespect to Nick Williams or Deshaun Hand, but if he played the same role, he'd come in as our best. He'd be better than those two guys, I would believe, personally, than those two guys. Nick Williams, he's a solid player, you know? Deshaun Hand, he's good. You know, he's a good pass rusher. He can be. He hasn't really been the same type of pass rusher since early in his career, but you can't rely on him to be healthy either. Michael Brockers will be our best. And for the Detroit Lions, the defensive line, after the Romeo signing to me, was looking good at pass rushers. I mean, we were looking strong at pass rusher. Now you had an interior presence like Michael Brockers, who can do a little bit of both, especially stop the run. Oh my goodness. I think the defensive line is really good right now. I really think the defensive line might be our strongest position. Maybe aside from offensive line, I mean, serious, well, maybe running back, running back starting to push up there because we got depth and we got starters. We got flowers. We got Romeo. I mean, we got ballers on the edge. We got Julian. We got Bryant. But then you look inside, you got Penicini, you got Hand, now you got Brockers, okay? And then you, so you got Nick Williams still. So you got some dudes in here to play any defense. It's very versatile right now. But Michael Brockers has some really good numbers. And uh, I think, honestly, yeah, it's a pretty nice cap at the line for taking. But clearly, you know, they're sticking to it. Where are we two years from now? To me, that's the Michael Brockers move. And it also is helping out, you know, Les Need a little bit here, taking some money that they need because they're trying to add pieces around Matthew for that trade. And uh, they don't have a lot of money. So that's all we have right now i'm actually going to refresh this one second i'll throw the stats up on the screen i just want to check really quickly just to see if uh, we have any updates on what the lions gave up it doesn't look like it now there is this interesting thing that apparently michael brockers uh when jared goff was here when when matt stafford's traded to the rams he kind of said like stafford's on another level and then he got traded to the Lions. So it's kind of awkward. You know, I'm not going to lie. It's probably a little awkward because it's like, oh, dang, Stafford's a level up. And now you're working with golf again. So it's probably a little, a little awkward. I can't lie. But hey, people say things, right? So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I don't know. I, I guess they were okay with it, but I made, they probably just didn't make a big deal out of it. Again, I don't know what the Lions are giving up. We'll know soon. I'll put it in the comments. But Michael Brockers, the Detroit Lion, and the news is popping off. That defensive line looking good, baby. This is, we've seen it this offseason. Pressure guys don't come cheap. No matter the position, if you can get after the quarterback, you're not going to be cheap. We saw it with Nick, and we see it with Brockers. He ain't cheap, but the Lions probably got the best deal because they might not have to give up a lot to do this just because the Rams are trying to save some money. All right? So this is beautiful opportunity for Detroit. Man, like... There's clear a focus here. We want a strong defensive line, and it's deep right now, and I love it. Absolutely love it. And the most overlooked part of his game would be the fact that he's only missed five games in his entire career. Five. Five. He's been in the league since 2012. He's missed five games. And after seeing the Lions defense last year with all the injuries, I like getting guys that aren't hurt, that don't have these injury pass. We have too many injuries, guys. you got to be able to be play on the field. So to bring in guys like this, like Jamal, who hasn't missed much time, Brockers, the guys that don't miss time, it's honestly a breath of fresh air. Leave your thoughts, scouts, below. Thank you for watching. And I'm